Hi, so today we're going to be doing the experiment 9 reaction of the dehydration of methyl cyclohexanol and we're going to be turning it into an alkene product. So this is the general scheme of the reaction. We're going to be taking 2 methyl cyclohexanol, we're going to be taking 10 ml of it and then combining it with an 85% concentrated of phosphoric acid, 5 ml of that, which will act as a catalyst. We're going to go ahead and put it under reflux for about 20 to 25 minutes um, after it begins to uh, boil. And then we have three possible um, products, but this will be the main product we will be getting. It will be the 1-methyl cyclohexene. The minor will be 3-methyl cyclohexene and very trace amounts of methyl, uh, methylene cyclohexene. And then water is byproduct. Yeah, water is our byproduct. Some key points to note um, that there are two chiral centers uh, for the two methyl cyclohexanol, which are right here and right here. So there is going to be four different stereoisomers you can make um, from this um, chemical. You can go ahead and draw them in your pre-lab if you'd like. And then, so just another note is to be very careful with our concentrated phosphoric acid because it is a strong acid. So avoid all contacts to the body. Uh, we're going to be using boiling stones for the reflux, so don't forget those. And make sure you check all your glasswares for, uh, glasswares for any um, breaks or scratches or if it's dirty. And then, you know, just check all the joints. Uh, make sure that they're greased whenever you are doing your reaction. And, um, and check your water hose as well. Make sure it's on. Okay, so we're going to be going over the mechanism of our E1 reaction or our elimination 1 reaction. So we start off with our 2-methyl cyclohexanol, and it will be going under protonation with the phosphoric acid. And from here, once we have our protonated alcohol, it will then um, be dehydrated and released as H2O. So once we, it will create this carbocation on this carbon right here, and uh, the hydrogen of the neighboring carbon will then um, help form the alkene. So the way you can know that the reaction is occurring is the beginning product will have a weak coconut odor, kind of sweet, and at the end it will have more of like a citrusy, kind of like smells like petroleum um, odor. And then for our product analysis, we are going to be doing a bromine test and we are always going to be doing a percent yield test. Some other tests that we can do are GC, IR, and NMR to test for purity. We're now going to be going over the apparatus um, set up for two, both steps of the reaction. So whenever we are first um, doing the reaction, we're going to be have our solution in a round bottle flask, and that round bottle flask is going to sit in our heating mantle. The round bottle flask is then going to be attached with a fractional distillation column. Um, it's the bigger one that you'll see that looks very similar to the condenser. And then attached to that, we're going to go ahead and add a three-way adapter, or it's also called a distilling head. Um, and then also have an adapter for our thermometer to be placed in there, making sure that the immersion line is um, aligned with our condenser. So then we're going to have our condenser here, having our cold water in on the lower end and our hot water coming out over here. And then attached to the adapter, which will then um, be giving a uh, putting our product into our receiving flask. Yeah, um, here we have our crude product. Yes, this is going to be our crude product. It's going to be in a nice uh, bath as well. So once we have our crude product, we are then going to be doing three different washes um, with, um, on the separatory funnel in order to uh, help purify to get our product. Um, so the first one is going to be with the so, uh, sodium white. Sodium carbonate solution. solution and then it's also going to be with water and then our saturated um, sodium chloride wash so all once all those three are done we then take our organic layer and then dry it over um, calcium chloride and once it's dry we will then measure weigh and then do our bromine tests and percent yield Okay, so before starting this uh, dehydration of uh, two methyl cyclohexanol reaction, make sure you prop are in wear uh, proper clothes, personal protective equipments, gloves, goggles, full pant, coat, 
out of our shoes and then now you are ready to go so here we have our reel hi in order to do our experiment today we're going to be using a variety of glassware um, the biggest ones to note are going to be your um, simple distillation condenser and your fractional distillation um, this one's also a condenser but it's fairly larger as you can tell so in order to just, um, make sure to be able to tell the difference between the two this one you're used to using this one's going to be a little bit bigger as well as our separation funnel. i'm sure you are uh, familiar with as well The two chemicals that we are going to be using um, in our experiment today are 2-methyl cyclohexene and... This is 2-methyl cyclohexanol. Hexanol and uh, concentrated phosphoric acid. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and measure out um, 10 mLs of the 2-methyl uh, cyclohexanol. And we're going to do this in the graduated cylinder. Just make sure you're doing it under the fume hood. And then whenever you are pipetting, make sure you do not tilt the um, pipette um, upside down or else it can contaminate the bowl. All right. This is a viscous liquid. It's not very Easy flow. Now this is ten ml. transfer it to the round bottom flask. Um, before you do that, make sure that all of your glass, or not just your round, round bottom flask, is not broken, um, no cracks, especially star cracks or anything. Make sure it's clean. Um, if it is, you can return it back to the stock room. So now we're going to transfer the 2-methyl cyclohexanol into the round bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and measure out 5 mLs of the uh, concentrated phosphoric acid. Yeah, basically I think uh, it would be better uh, we can transfer this into this beaker then it would be easier so not to contaminate your main con solution this is also very viscous look like yeah oily it looks like it. ml yeah it's a uh, three to five ml should be enough but we'll go a little bit more five Transfer it into same amount of glass. And then uh, just make sure you put you, your two boiling stones in 
Yeah, we need to reflux this solution. So, refluxing always need few boiling stones. Yeah, few boiling stones. Now we are ready. into our heating mantle. Make sure you do have it clamped down. That way it is secure. And then we can lower it down. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and start using our fractional distillation uh, condenser and we're gonna grease the joints. So all you need to do is put a small amount and then you can go ahead and kind of just guide it around um, with your finger in order so that the grease can get all the way around and put a little bit more. You don't wanna to use too much though, um, just enough to grease the joint. Okay, and then once we are in here, we can go ahead and Turn this around so that way it can grease this part of the round bottle flask. Okay, and so you can see it's nice and clear. So that's how you can tell it's greased. And then on top of the uh, attached to our fractional distillation, we're going to be using a three-way adapter, which we are also going to grease. So again, we're going to put a small amount, and with our finger, we can guide it along the entire joint. And then doing the same, just spinning it around, making sure that it is clear so that way we know it's greased. Okay. All right. And then on top of that, lastly, we're going to go ahead and put an adapter for our thermometer. And again, we are greasing it. There will be thermometer on this top. Yes. Nice. So they are all transparent joints, which is means they have grease. So here the immersion line mm -hmm. must be. This is the immersion line. Must be in front of the three-way adapter head. attaching our uh, condenser and so we need to make sure that this joint is greased for it and just put a little bit all the way around like we've been doing and then we'll go ahead and attach make sure you do spin it be careful and then we can go ahead and right there we are also going to be clamping down um, just so we can make sure nothing will fall and break so we're gonna go ahead and clamp down right here make sure that the small side is attached to the smaller end um, like the thinner end that's going in the joint I'm gonna place another clamp right over here so you can see the smaller end is right here okay we're also going to be attaching our adapter so we're going to go ahead and grease this joint. So this is our receiver end where we will add, basically it's called I think vacuum adapter. <coughs> Nice. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and attach the hose. The way the hose is attached, we're going to be doing water in on this end and water out on that end. So we're going to go ahead and grab this. This is our water in at your lab station. Go ahead and attach this. And then your water out.
and just make sure that you put your water out back over here so you can drain. So now you can see our fractional distillation and condenser assembly is ready for reflux. And then we have to add some thing at the receiver end, then we we'll start heating. Yes. So now we're going to go ahead and put an e flask at our receiver end. The e flask does need to be um, submerged in ice. So we're going to go ahead and place it in here, make sure it does align so that way it is um, attached. You can move the jack up. That way it does not spill outside of the Yes. Box. Okay. All right, and then we now can, we can add some ice around it. Yes, we're going to surround it with ice. ice we can put later. <laughs> we can start the heating and then do it later on and so you're going to want to make sure you turn on your uh, water for the condenser so hold on to your in um, while you turn on the water and only turn it on slightly you don't need too much there we go. now you can see water came very fast yeah. here okay so condenser water is okay okay and then we can go ahead and turn Start. on our heating mantle on eight Eight. And then we will observe the temperature. Okay, so we start the refluxing, and then we'll see after some time what temperature is coming. So here you can see after uh, seven minutes, this solution is start boiling, and we have uh, eight knob number eight knob, and the vapors are started coming to the up but uh, thermometer temperature is still not increasing so we have to wait some more time so after seven minutes my solution is start boiling it's now been 12 minutes and our uh, solution is still boiling but it's now condensing through the uh, fractional distillation condenser you can see right here you can see the condensation building up right here as well and now you can see it uh, running through. Oh, it's, I can see yeah. first drop is coming here. Mm -hmm. And so now we are now refluxing. What is the temperature right now? Temperature right now is about 84 degrees, 82 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's around, oops, sorry. It's around 82. So refluxing is occurring around 82 degree celsius and this temperature reaches around after 12 minutes and lot of condensation is start coming here all the vapors and condensation is going on and here we can see that it uh, start dripping solution nice Um, 20 minutes since we started uh, heating up our uh, solution is still boiling it's now turned yellow which is good um, there's nothing wrong with that and it's still condensing and cooling and you can see it trickling down um, and giving us our product uh, not our final product but and so we're gonna keep doing this until there's only about one to two mLs left in the round bottom flask. So we're still gonna keep refluxing. Whenever it was after 20 minutes, we did increase the heating into nine. So that way the reflux can increase in temperature and speed up the process. <clears throat> so here, after increasing temperature to nine uh, knob number, this temperature in the thermometer we observe it was reaches around 106 degrees celsius and now it's a little bit cooler might be almost reaction is over so probably we will wait um, maybe five minutes more then we will stop it so whenever our temperature did 
did hit 106. It then started going down. We're back about 81 degrees Celsius. So that's how you know that the reaction is over. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off the reflux. And it left about roughly two, two to three ml. You start bumping, so probably its reaction is over. Mm -hmm. 100% over. Yeah. So as soon as temperature goes down below 85, we should stop the heating. And now we'll do the workup of this uh, reaction to isolate the product. So now that we're done refluxing, we're going to go ahead and take this down. So this and is the workup step. Yes, this is the workup of our reaction. Um, so we're going to start with two-phase separation to begin oh, isolating product. our product. So we're going to go ahead and put 2 ml of sodium bicarbonate. So this is 2 ml sodium carbonate to neutralize the acid if we have any excess. And then we're going to go ahead and kind of mix this around. And we're gonna go ahead and put it into our separatory funnel. Um, yeah. But before we do that, we do need to make sure that it is in the closed position. So going straight up and down, this is open, so it will come just straight through. But if we put it horizontal, um, it will not go. So this is closed right here. This is what we want. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and pour it into our separatory funnel. And so now we're going to go ahead and rinse this off with water just so we can get all the all of our product. So we'll do this uh, in the second round. First we will separate. It's already we have here two layers you can see. So let's uh, remove this one first. Okay so now you can see um, very nice two layers you can see in your separate funnel. See upper layer is um, your product which is alkene and the lower layer is the aqueous layer which is the washing with the sodium bicarb. So the best way to um, shake this one, hold it with your one hand and hold this from your palm and close upside down and then release the racer first, ventilate and then shake it like this. Bend again, then shake. One more bend and then shake. One more bend and then close. Then put it on the o ring stand and then open this stopper. And wait till the two layer nicely separated out again. So now you can see the uh, two layers are separated. We'll collect uh, the bottom layer. Very gently you have to open it. And this is the aqueous uh, layer. We can throw this one. And now we'll do this uh, uh, water wash with uh, 10 ml of water. And then we have to shake it. And so now we're going to go ahead and shake it and vent it again so that way it's mixed. Make sure that it is closed off. And so you're going to hold it from one end and make sure you have the stop covered. Shake, vent, one more time, shake. And then you just wait for the layers to separate once again. Um, and make sure to remove this so that the layers can separate. Now we can see that the layers have separated again. So we're going to go ahead and drain the aqueous layer from the organic.
And so we're gonna go ahead and wash with saturated NaCl in order to get rid of any uh, remaining water. water. Yeah, with this uh, sodium chloride wash, or this is also called brine wash, will remove any water residual from the alkene. Now we need to shake it and vent it again. And now we need our measuring cylinder and small Elmer flask. We need to clean them and then dry to dry our product. So we are going to clean and dry it because they are right now all wet. glassware that we're going to need um, for this next step. Make sure you oven dry it just so it's fast and you're not using anything else um, so they're nice and clean for the next step. We're going to be taking calcium chloride to dry our organic layers. So we're going to go ahead and take a bit of this and we're going to place it in an e-flask that we're going to be collecting um, our organic layer in. A little bit more. So now let's drain out this last layer of aqueous. So this is the sodium chloride layer which we are removing. Okay. A little bit more. So there we go. That's it. There we go. Okay. And now okay. we will dry our uh, organic layer, which is product, directly on the calcium chloride. Oops. Oh. Oops. 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 We lose a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this is called experimental <laughs> error. <laughs> For about two minutes uh, for the calcium chloride make sure it's shaken up a little um, just so that way it can dry properly we're gonna go ahead and transfer uh, very carefully to our graduated cylinder but first we're gonna have to weigh it so we're gonna go ahead and place it on the scale and close this and then we're gonna go ahead and wait for it to set and then hit tear that way we have the weight of just of our product Transfer very carefully. So you have to decant very slowly, not to calcium chloride. We have here we have about approximately five, five. Let's see like about 56 5.5 okay 5.8 so okay. we lost almost one ml or one and a half ml but <laughs> yeah. anyway that was the error experimental, experimental error, error. <laughs> it happened with everyone maybe we can see every drop oh for six ml so now we have six ml right Okay. We have 5.8. 5.8 ml. So we got the 5.8 ml product. We lose some of them. <laughs> and then now we'll weigh how many grams. 
so you, we can use a uh, density also but we have a mixture of here so better will we measure the gram quantities which is around 4.697 gram and might be it we lose some of them so it might be 6 gram approximately so we'll use this value to measure uh, the percentage yield of the product and then now it's time to test and do a bromine test to test if the alkene presence. So we're gonna go ahead and first test our starting material right here, the uh, two methyl cyclohexanol, and we're also gonna test our final product. So let's go ahead and start testing. You're gonna grab about um, two mLs. <clears throat> oh, sorry, about two mLs of the product you're testing. And this will be enough, okay. probably even one and a half. All right, and then you can see that it's clear. Okay. Yes. And then we're gonna go ahead and add just two drops. Of yeah, bromine solution is red, and see what happened. Okay. All right, you can see that there's still coloration in yeah, our. You can add some more because this is a dilute uh, solution. So bromine will not decolorize with the uh, cyclohexanol, so it will remain yellow color. Now we'll test for the product. For our product. So whenever you're doing this, you are going to grab also two mLs, and you're only going to put in um, about two to three drops. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and put drops with our remaining. You can see directly it's no change in compare so this is starting material and now you can see our reaction works mm -hmm. that there is an alkene present so you can test like this one this is with the starting material and this is the product even if you will add more you can see directly bromine will decomposes so it means we have alkene. So now the fun part is remain. That is the <laughs> cleaning of the glass fields. So to clean all the assemblies, as you have to be very gentle to remove the uh, all the assemblies. And then here you can see we have a hexane, and uh, we have in this uh, water and organic waste. So for cleaning, we have to use hexanes to remove the grease. Put the hexane on paper towel and then rub it inside like this one and then uh, rinse all the glassware with the acetone and then soap and water and then finally give the acetone and dry it then you will be ready to go for the from the lab we'll make sure everything nice and clean not broken